For six long years, one young Canadian boy has done anything you can poke a stick at. From running around the mall in a Sonic hat, losing his pet horse, to decapitating Tom Nook, talking about a tiny jingle in a Mario game. WHAT?! OH MY GOD! Watching cartoons about bananas with Josh Peck, what screaming at Pokemon, turning into paper, getting a sunburn while playing Fire Emblem, the Nathan709 has done it all! And even after hitting 1,000 subscribers, the grind didn't stop! He continued to scream like a girl for a plumber, to then drive to get a plumber in 3D! He answered questions from everyone, went to therapy, dressed up like Peter Pan to play a recorder in the woods, EVEN TALKED TO WOMEN! But this Christmas, his love for the holiday season shines even greater than ever until one single moment that would change his perspective of this season of giving. Oh, hey guys, it's the Nathan709 here, and it's that time of year again. The time of year where you get another load of socks and underwear from your grandmother. It's Christmas time, my absolute favorite time of the year. If it wasn't for National Bubble Wrap Appreciation Day. Christmas is also a very nostalgic time of the year for me. Every year I tend to look back at Christmas's past and be reminded of the many memories I had when I was younger. And that time happens to be right now. Here's what kids call an artificial intelligence thinking machine CPU box, but what I like to call a computer. You know, besides pictures and videos of me taking a bath when I was three, there are many different videos in here from Christmas's past. Oh, this one looks interesting. Let's see what kind of cool stuff I got that year. What are you doing? I'm wrapping this. I'm wrapping presents. Here is George's underwear. Here is George's underwear. What is it? Show me. Show Daddy. What is it? It's Curious George underwear. Nice. Grandma's done it again. <sighs> Hold on one sec. I have Mario pajamas on. And yeah, that reminds me, you can get video games on Christmas. Imagine this, you wake up on Christmas morning to a half-bitten cookie and milk on the floor. Yup, the fat man was here, and everything under the tree is proof. After unwrapping the classics, toothpaste, an orange, and bathroom Sudoku, you finally get to the big box that you've been waiting to open. After doing so, and receiving a deluxe pack of socks, you see one more gift. Taking that wrapping paper off to reveal a new video game console. This is so exciting! You're finally able to play games you've been waiting to play. But, what games? See, a new video game console costs a lot of money, usually $200 to $500, so you're more than likely only getting that console without any games to play on them. Because of this, game companies packed a game in with a console. You're able to hop right into the fun straight out of the box. This allows one purchase instead of many, and stops fights on Black Friday sales for the last copy of Toy Story 3 on the DS. I love the feeling of getting a game packed in with your new console. It's the first memories you have with that console. It's the only game you have for a while, until you go out and buy a new one. So it holds a very special place in your heart. Just like the feeling of the first video game you ever played. Anyways, all this excitement about Christmas and packing games, I had to get it out somehow. But I don't know what to do. Alright, I can watch a movie. Lego Dimensions that really exists? I guarantee you, it was a mess. Games that are the anti ass Just take pedal for you, swine. The tree. I thought that was WarioWare! Email Santa. Why would I email him when he's calling me right now? Hi there, what's your name? Nathan. That is my favorite name! <laughs> How old are you? Elf yourself? <laughs> now we're talking.
perfect. Is there a good buddy Mario in on the action? This'll do. This penguin right here. Perfect. Let's dance. You know it's good, but it's not as good as my old one from 2014. Read the kids a classic. All right, I had enough of this website. Let me go to another one. Become a Salvation Army bell ringer. Where's the bell? Ooh, listen to Christmas music. This is one of my favorites. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas from the Nathan 709. Good gaming. Warms my heart every time. All right, that's it. I can't find anything. I've done everything. Wait, events? Why didn't I think of that? I can have my own event, a Christmas party, a gathering of other Christmas lovers like myself, a place where we can all share our love for Christmas and... Video game. Wait, video games. I'm right. Not only can I spread my Christmas cheer, but I also share my recent fascination with packing games. This is gonna be the greatest Christmas party for people who love Christmas and video games ever. All right, let's plan this thing. The day has finally come. It's finally time for my Christmas party. I've made sure that this will be the best Christmas party ever. I have all the essentials. Here we have everyone's favorite choking hazard, food. That's why I have the sign here. I'm not looking to get beat up or sued around Christmas. Here is every couch sitter's favorite spot. The couch. Need a break from all that yule tiding? Well, this is the spot for you. I hung up a bit of mistletoe above the door. I don't know who's showing up tonight. This could be my lucky night. And finally, the television. I brought up some of the packing games that I own. I think every party should have them. I mean, who needs coasters when you have Kinect Adventures? With everything prepared, now I just have five hours to kill before everyone shows up. You know, I was gonna wait till everyone showed up, but that you draw is really calling my name. These are all the packing games that I own. Very small, but hey, at least I have more of these in my GameCube collection. These were packed in with new video game consoles or with some add-ons. So let's see if that first experience with the new console or new add-on was worth it. The Wii, or as I like to call it, everyone had one. Released on November 19th, 2006, the Wii sold incredibly well with the help from the first packing title I'm discussing. Wii Sports was packed in with every Wii. These must have been pencils for scalpers. Wii Sports helped the Wii become a console for everyone, easing and straight to the point motion controls, mimicking five different sports. It was a tech demo to show what the Wii was capable of, and appeals to sports fans and non-sports fans alike. So, let's get ready to sport. So we have five sports to choose from. Tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, and boxing. Wait, where's extreme ironing? Let's start things off with tennis. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's tennis. Stand up, hold the Wii remote like a tennis racket, and you're ready. When you see the ball coming toward you, you swing the Wii remote, and that's it. Just make sure that you don't hit the ball out. I stink at that. And you're good. 
One thing I'll mention now is the way you're supposed to control these sports. Nintendo really wants you to get up and pretend you're actually pretending to play that sport. I mean, on the back cover it says, If I squint, play like a pro. And I don't think they meant this. The first couple weeks of owning a Wii, we played the sports like normal. But as soon as I sat down to admire my complete series of Seinfeld and... I love this. WHAT?! You can easily sit down and play these games. You don't have to get up and play them normally. Sure, they make the game feel more real. But you don't have to get up and play them normally. With that out of the way, batters up. Baseball is the complete opposite of tennis. This time you want to hit the ball out. Each team takes turns switching sides, from batter to pitcher. As the batter, you swing the Wii remote to hit the ball, trying to run from base to base to make it back home. It's baseball. Single. Thanks for reminding me. The most infamous sport from this game is bowling, which is also the most infamous way to break a TV. Bowling, get this, is bowling. Fling the Wii remote forward to release the ball toward the pins, trying to knock them down. You have to keep the B button held down while swinging the Wii remote, something that's apparently really hard for me. You know, last time I checked, when I go bowling, I don't need to ask, where's the B button? You can set the angle and where you want to throw the ball, and then throw. GOLF! Is the world's most boring sport of all time. Hold up, do, hold up, do, I, do I hear the golf fan community? Hey, you better stop making fun of golf, okay? Ah! The goal of golf is to, again, hit the ball, but this time, in a hole. You can change your club to have a better hit, whether you're trying to hit it far, or if the hole is closer and you need a little tiny hit. Dang it! And finally, the best sport in this game, boxing. This sport requires you to attach a nunchuck to the Wii Remote to play, to simulate boxing gloves. So in this game, boxing is boxing. Three rounds, too many bruises, and this. You just keep hitting the other person until they fall. If you end up getting knocked out, you play Soda Shaker from 1-2 Switch. Screw Logan Paul vs. Floyd Mayweather. Here we have the Nathan709 vs. This guy. There's two other modes next to these five sports. First is training mode. A bunch of different training games for each sport. Little tiny practice challenges to help you get better at each sport. And finally, Wii Fitness. This mode takes three challenges from the training mode, and depending on how well you do, it gives you a fitness age. They grow up so fast! So that was Wii Sports, pretty solid packing title. Pretty easy to pick up and play. So now let's go from bestseller to not. If the Wii was so good, where's the Wii 2? Except change the 2 to a U and the answer to that question being no. The Wii U did terribly compared to the Wii, but that doesn't mean its packing title was bad. When it was released on November 18th, every Wii U owner got a copy of Nintendo Land. This game is basically a huge theme park full of attractions based on many Nintendo franchises. Mario, Zelda, Pikmin, Metroid, Octopus, Dancing Guy, only the classics. Let's start with Mario Chase. The player on the gamepad has a grace period to run around the course, and after 10 seconds or so, the other player on the Wiimote controls a toad and tries to chase down Mario. Pretty simple. Yeah, when you get caught, you... No! But it's pretty fun. Before we move on, I'll mention this interesting part about this game. Since the Wii U has a camera, some of the attractions use it so that you can see the other player that's playing with the gamepad. For some reason. What? Do you really want to see someone at an unflattering angle doing this? Next is Luigi's Ghost Mansion. This game is set in a haunted ghost mansion with multiple rooms. The gamepad user controls the ghost. You try to scare the Wiimote users, who control the Luigis. Get ready for a lot of- <coughs> The Luigis have flashlights to help catch the ghost, but also the lights flicker every once in a while to help the Luigi spot the ghost even easier. Next is Metroid Blast. In this attraction, the player on the gamepad controls a ship, and the player on the Wii Remote controls a Samus. Both have to shoot... those. You can zoom in to shoot and collect hearts, and... that's it. Moving on, we have The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest. In this game, one person controls the gamepad as an archer, and up to three other people on the Wii Remotes as swordsmen. You walk through the map, fighting Bokoblins, making it to the end to obtain the Triforce. Now watch this one. Actually, that's about it. Next is Pikmin Adventure. The player with the gamepad plays the role of Captain Olimar, that selfish brat who defends himself from Bulbors and other creatures by throwing innocent Pikmin. And the player on the Wiimote 
who plays the role of a helper, just kind of bonks their head everywhere for some reason. You make it through the level, fight the boss, and that that's it. That, that's literally it. Next, we have Animal Crossing Sweet Day. In this game, the player on the Wiimote has to go around collecting candies and drop them off in these flagpole crater things. The player on the gamepad uses the two joysticks to control two soldiers of some sort who have to hunt down and kill any candy collector in sight. And get this, that's it. Wow, these games are quick. Let's move on to the single player attractions. These solely use the gamepad. First is Yoshi's Fruit Cart. A bunch of fruit is scattered across the board and using the gamepad, you need to draw a line to try and collect all the fruit. You really need to carefully look at the placement of the fruit to make sure you collect it all. After a bit, these craters will appear and you have to try to avoid those while drawing your line. It's pretty simple and fun. Next is Octopus Dance, or as my 10 year old self said, What? For those who don't know, this attraction is based on the Game & Watch game, Octopus, that was released in 1981. It's really cool to have some obscure Nintendo title represented in this game. But why on the Wii U? In this attraction, you use the gamepad's joysticks to copy the movements of the diver guy. It starts off pretty simple, three movements on the three beats of the music. Later, it's only one or two movements at random beats, so it gets harder. Next, we have Donkey Kong's Crash Course. In this attraction, you control this wheel thing and tilt the gamepad to travel down the course, sometimes having to press the ZL and ZR button or blow into the mic to move some obstacles. Sometimes, you can go too fast or get caught, which makes you get squashed like a banana. I don't think I've ever completed this attraction. Moving on, here's Takemaru's Ninja Castle. In this attraction, you defend yourself from ninja by throwing ninja stars at them. To do this, you have to turn the gamepad sideways and use your finger or stylus to throw these stars. Later on, you can draw circles on the gamepad to make bombs that you can use. Second to last is Captain Falcon's Twister Race. This one is really cool. You again, turn the gamepad on its side and move it from side to side, racing to get to the finish line. And that, that's it. That, that's all you do. But it's probably one of the, my favorite attractions from this game. And the final attraction is Balloon Trip Breeze. In this one, your Mii is floating on two balloons. You have to use a stylus to blow air towards your Mii, trying to avoid birds while collecting other balloons, and make it to the goal. If a bird pops all your balloons, or you fall, well... And those are all the attractions, but there's another mode in this game, Attraction Tour. This is a mode where at least two players compete, playing three rounds of multiple attractions. This is mainly the mode I come back to with this game. If I ever feel like playing Nintendo Land, this is the mode I play. So those games were packed in with consoles, but a packing game doesn't necessarily need to be packed in with a console. These next few games were packed in with some add-ons for some consoles. In 2010, THQ were looking at the Wii and thought, why can't I draw with this? The U-Draw is a drawing tablet for the Wii. This was when the Wii was getting everything, wheels, guns, vitality sensors that don't come out, so a drawing tablet was a no-brainer. I have the black variant of the U-Draw from 2011, and with every black variant came U-Draw Studio Instant Artist. So let's learn how to U-Draw Studio Instant Artist. There are a couple different modes here. First we have Art School. There are loads of different classes you can take, all with different drawing techniques. In these, this Da Vinci teaches us the lesson we selected. For instance, I chose Draw Tomato. You go through multiple steps until you make it to the final product. Here's a comparison of the original to mine. I know. Now I'm Da Vinci. Next is Art Play. This is the do whatever you want mode of this game. You can pick any of the canvases you want, and then draw literally anything. Anything. The next mode is Art Camp. You can choose from a select number of activities like number paint or tilt coloring, but I went with coloring book. I'm literally painting a birthday cake. This is all I needed back in 2011. The other three modes are pretty simple. Extras, you change the background, create a signature, stuff like that. Gallery, you look at your saved drawings, what else would it be for? And finally, settings. It's settings. You know, I had enough of holding plastic to play video games. That's more like it. To combat Nintendo's Wii, Microsoft released the Kinect, an add-on for the Xbox 360. They took the concept of motion controls a step further. What if you can control video games without a controller? The Kinect used a sensor to track your movement. So instead of controlling games with just your arm and one remote, you can control games with your whole body. 
The Kinect was released with three different packing games at some point. Kinect Adventures, Kinect Sports, and Kinect Star Wars. I'm only going to be talking about Kinect Adventures since it was the first game to be packed in with the Kinect. So, here's Kinect Adventures. There's a couple of different modes here as well. First, let's briefly talk about Adventures. Before we start, it goes through this whole opening cutscene about exploring or something, I don't know. And then we start our adventure. Basically, you travel a map playing one minigame to try to collect a badge. Once you do collect the badge, the animal that's on it comes to life, and you get to record a dance for it. For some reason. I've said that a lot this video. Let's move on to free play. Here we get to play all 5 games, starting with 20,000 leaks. In this game, fish come up and bash through the glass, which creates a leak, so you have to fix it. You move your hands and feet toward the leaks. Hold it there for a second, and it's fixed. Wait, it's that easy? I'll mention this now. Something that this game does, and what most Kinect games do, is when you're playing, they'll take three random photos of you. Some can be really cool, but some are interesting. Moving on, we have River Rush. In this game, you're in a raft going down a river. You jump to get over things, get to higher places, and collect coins while also moving side to side to avoid getting hit as well. Next is Rally Ball. You raise your left or right hand to serve the ball. Then you move your whole body side to side to hit the ball back and hit the blocks or targets on the other side. When you hit the orange and white targets, multiple balls of the same color appear and you have to hit them as well. So it adds a little more of a challenge. And that's Rally Ball. Wow, we are really going through these games fast. Second to last is Reflex Ridge. In this game, you move on a cart, trying to pull off Fall Guys and dodge these things. And I am really bad at this! And finally, Space Pop. You float, fly, and fall, trying to pop bubbles. But in space. I don't know what else to say. There's two more modes in this game. Online play. How? And timed play. Which I can't even access yet. So... I'm done. Well, it's been five hours. It's people showing up time. Let's see who actually showed up to this thing. Huh, that's weird. The doorbell hasn't rung yet. Huh, that's weird. Everyone should be here by now. Question, are you guys people? Uh, last time I checked. All right, you're coming with me. Stop! We're good. Welcome to the people who love Christmas and video games party. You guys love Christmas, right? I'm Jewish. I knew that would come in handy one day. I'm Christian. <laughs> but I'm not a party. None of us are. Uh, actually, I'm a party. But I don't know if I'm a person. Anyways, are you guys couch lovers? Oh, oh me, me, oh, me, me, oh, me, 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 They haven't moved for 20 minutes, and I need to get over there to set up for the presentation. I've tried everything. Okay, everyone, 10 a.m. Santa's coming. Guys, I killed someone. Guys, look! This! These guys won't budge at all. <sighs> I got one more trick up my sleeve. Choking hazards, am I right? Oh my god! <sighs> well, since they're finally distracted, it's time to set up for the other half of this Christmas party.
Does anyone know what the menorah is? Hey guys, remember that couch from earlier? Well, you see, we are not couch lovers anymore. We are ones with choking. Can I have your attention, please? Has anyone noticed anything missing from this Christmas? I'm Jewish. And Hanukkah party? Toy Story 3 for the DS. I haven't seen a dreidel yet. Uh, where's your washer? What I was hoping you guys were gonna say were... Video games, come on, have you not read the sign? I'd like you guys to turn your attention over to the TV. What's your favorite thing about Christmas morning? Oh yeah, stockings, Presents, eggnog, music. turkey. What is that? Getting a new console with a packing game, of course. Packing a what's it? NES, it was the best. It was better than the rest. It had Goomba stumps and blasting. And get this, it was packed in. Game Boy, now that was a phase. Falling blocks were all the craze. Nintendo seemed to rain so high, it's like they couldn't say goodbye. Sega came and stole the show. That blue hedgehog wasn't slow. Sony hopped in the gaming scene. That gecko can't confirm he's green. Games, 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 games. How did they reach so high in fame? Just open a box and look within, cause they were packed in. We're not even halfway through yet. We haven't even got to how much a gimmick the early 2000s were. Tetris Worlds and the Clone Wars Flocks of people filled the stores Five sports came with the Wii Grandma's bowling broke the TV But never fear, the Kinect was here River rush without no gear PSP said no to trains but cars No one will complain Wii U, wait that really happened? Disneyland for nerds, find them Switch, Xbox, PS4 These had packing games galore Games, 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 games How did they reach so high in fame? Just open a box and look within Cause they were packed in. And that it. Packing games. Yes or no? What does that have to do with Christmas? What do you mean? Packing games, Christmas, tomato, tomato. No? You know, how will we play them and find out? Wait, where's Connect Adventures? Oh, you mean this coaster? <laughs> Give me that. That's not a dreidel! So guys, what will it be? I mean, if I have to, it's just baseball. No! Whoops. All right, all right, all right. Enough of this. It's Disneyland time. Yeah! Come on, guys, it's Toodles. <laughs> you! This will finally make him stop. Let's see what you guys been drawing. What? Oh my god! This party stinks? How could it? I put so much time and effort into making this thing. You dragged us off the street for crying out loud. We didn't want to come to this party of yours. We don't love Christmas or video games the same way you do. Heck, some of us don't even celebrate Christmas. We hate this party and you. All right, it's my turn to write a hateful No, book. it's my turn! Actually, I think I should be the one to write it because look, uh, I look, I've been personally I haven't done anything. I'm sure it's a crowd. 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 Okay, okay, that's it. I had enough of this party. I tried to do something good to spread my Christmas cheer and show my love for this holiday and my love for video games. But I guess you guys didn't like it. Everyone 
remember not showing up it was almost it for me. I almost had enough, but then I saw you guys on the street and I thought maybe you guys would love my party, but you guys didn't. I had enough of Christmas. Does anyone have a dreidel? I literally tried everything, and even the one thing that somewhat worked still failed. Hello? Hey man, I'm just calling to say I'm really sorry I didn't make it to your Christmas party today. Doesn't matter. It was a huge disaster anyways. No one showed up. I had to drag three random strangers off the street. And they ended up hating it. And now, I I'm afraid I lost my Christmas spirit. I'm sorry to hear that, man. But don't let that ruin your Christmas spirit. Sometimes you just gotta look up, you know? I mean, I, I guess. Anyways, Dolly, have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, see ya. don't have Christmas spirit? A cringe. You know what? You know what? If you don't get your Christmas spirit back, he gets it. He gets it. Oh, what? What? You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Watch. What? <laughs> Come back, Nathan. Get up, soldier. This is no time to give up on Christmas. You can do this, Nathan. Stand up and fight. Nathan, this is no time for hesitation. It is Christmas time. Go forth, Nathan. Go forth. Nathan! Host of Nathan News, which is far superior from my Rada News. You have to get into the holiday spirit, my boy. You can do it! Yeah, you! You! You got this! Don't give up! Don't listen to those shameless bootlegs! You got this! You are the best! And you can do this! Kill you! Nathan! Nathan! Get back in that Christmas spirit! Come on, I believe in you, man! Get back in that Merry Seven Nine! I know you love Christmas, just like the old days! Come on, man! Get back in that Christmas spirit! I believe in you, man! Come on! Come on, Nathan, you gotta get back in the Christmas spirit. I mean, Rudolph's gonna cry if you don't. Come on, you gotta. Come on, Nathan, get your Christmas spirit back. Let's go, Nathan. You gotta get into the Christmas spirit, man. Come on, Nathan. Isn't Christmas like your favorite time of the year? Mr. Nathaniel, I heard that you lost your Christmas spirit. And unless you want to end up like this guy, I suggest you get your Christmas spirit back. Nathan, you need to get back into the Christmas spirit, man. I know secretly you love Christmas. You know, Christmas time, you get some time off. You can do whatever you want. You can uh, play some video games. I know you like video games. Uh, maybe start some new ones. Uh, maybe uh, finish some old ones, maybe? <laughs> oh, interesting. You can do it, Nathan. You can do it. You can get your Christmas spirit back. I know you can. Come on, Nathan. You got this. Get back into that Christmas spirit, and we'll be right behind you. You got this, bro.
Yeah, Nathan, let's go. Nathan, this is a message from your friend, Patrick. I need to tell you something, and it's very urgent. You need to save the world. You are the only man that can save us. You have the power to do it, and you need to do it, or else I'm going to be really, really upset, and I'm going to punch you in the face, like, really, really hard. Come on, Nathan. You got to have some Christmas spirit, man. Like, be happy or be glad that you get to be around family or friends uh, this holiday season, because not a lot of people get to have a family or have any friends at all, so come on. Have some Christmas spirit, man. Yeah, Nathan, come on. Yeah, give us the spirit. Come on. Yay! Yay! Don't give up, Nathan. All of us still have that Christmas spirit writing here in our hearts. You just gotta keep on believing, my guy. You got this. They're right. Why am I letting this put myself down? I mean, they're three strangers, and the party wasn't for them. I really shouldn't have dragged them into my house. Wait. They're still there. I threw a party that they didn't like, and they're still there. I, I gotta go. Go apologize. Hey guys, it's him! Get him! <sighs> I almost lost my 16 year streak of not being beat up around Christmas. Look at this, Jared. 
don't get anything much open here now. Wow, that was all stupid. I don't know why I cared so much about what those guys thought. The holidays mean something different for different people. I don't know why I assumed that they like the same things as I do. Christmas is not a time to be selfish, rather a time to spread kindness and love to everyone. And what it means to me does not necessarily mean it means the same to someone else. Forget what I said earlier, I love Christmas again because it means a lot to me. I need to go apologize. Hey guys! Oh god, god! Well, there goes my streak. I guess it takes 16 years. You know, I never thought I'd spend Christmas Day in a cast, but look where we are. This is karma. I know it. But I accept it. Not everyone has to celebrate the holidays the same way I do. Whether it's spending time with family, giving to the less fortunate, or talking about video games that are packed in with a console that you can receive on Christmas. Everyone has their own unique way to share their Christmas spirit. But if I have another party next year and no one shows up, I'm closing down shop. I can't pull another this year. I see a whole new light on things now. And you know what? I don't mind these.